Hi. Uh, I want to get this out of the way right off the bat. I'm no relation to Ann Coulter. <laughs> At least none that my family will publicly acknowledge. Uh, you guys, I know Comey's testifying right now, so I'm only going to look at Twitter a couple times during this talk. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm going to look at it a lot. <laughs> Uh, I'm so honored to speak to you today. I'm so particularly happy to be speaking directly after Ezra. Indivisible is one of the organizations I admire most, making change in our country right now. And uh, I also think that Grab Your Wallet is a nice bookend to what Ezra was talking about, because Grab Your Wallet was not founded as an overtly political or partisan movement. It's really more of a cultural movement. We actually have a fair number of registered Republicans as a part of Grab Your Wallet, including a lot of members of religious communities, a large contingent from the LDS Mormon community, which I find really interesting and very encouraging. Um, Grab Your Wallet is about consumer power and flexing consumer power in favor of a more respectful and inclusive society. I had uh, the head of a very well-known uh, nonprofit, very famous nonprofit, tell me recently that we should just not think of ourselves as consumers anymore. And I thought about it a lot because I knew where she was coming from, but I concluded that I respectfully disagree because I think that to reject our role as consumers would be to divorce ourselves from one of our most potent concentrations of power to affect change. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. My goal in talking to you today is to convey some of the things that I think were particularly helpful in turning Grab Your Wallet from uh, a tweet storm, a late night tweet storm, as it was just described, to, to a true movement. And I want to get this out of the way too, and right off the bat say that I, I know that there are many other consumer movements and organizations and efforts going on. I see Grab Your Wallet as just a part of that broader spectrum of effort. Grab Your Wallet certainly isn't the only consumer movement. Color of Change does amazing work around consumer power, ultraviolet to some of us. And I just want to give acknowledgement and credit to those organizations where do, because we're, you know, we see ourselves as standing on the shoulders of giants. Before that, Montgomery Street, you know, but Montgomery bus boycott, Nike child labor boycott, the boycotts of the 90s that uh, were instrumental in ending apartheid in South Africa. Um, I learned from all of those movements and, and hope to continue to do so. So this was the tweet that started it all. Uh, this was in the wake of the release of the Access Hollywood tapes. I was feeling like a lot of people, very angry, very sad, even was having some bad memories of stuff that happened to me in one particular workplace in Silicon Valley. Um, and I got such an immediate and a strong response from people to that tweet that I felt a responsibility to do more. There was so much energy behind it. A lot of people were just overtly own owning their consumer power and wanting to flex it, wanting to do things with it. So these were some of the early responses. And from that, Grab Your Wallet was born. I really see myself just as one part, one member of Grab Your Wallet. I, I loved the, the dictum earlier to build with, not for. I really see Grab Your Wallet as in the tradition of that. I, I feel like I'm honored to act alongside the many women and men of this movement. Um, <laughs> Grab your wallet, since we started, uh, 23 companies have ended their financial ties to the Trump family. Thank you. Grab your wallet participants have also been very active in the movement to get advertisers off of Breitbart, along with, of course, Sleeping Giants. So I'm, I was very happy to see people cross-pollinate and participate in that way. And of course, we read yesterday, there have been a slew of stories recently that because Breitbart lost 90% of its advertisers, it's been forced to take a more mainstream approach to its content, which has in turn alienated the far right, which, as far as I'm concerned, is success. Um, we have defanged hate on Breitbart, so that I think is a major achievement I'm very proud of. And then along with organizations like Color of Change that was working on it for two years, we were very kindly credited by the New York Times with partly being instrumental in helping Bill O'Reilly take his leave of Fox News. <laughs> and Ultra, Ultraviolet also was very active on that front. I want to I wanna make sure I mention that. Um, one of the things that I think really helped move Grab Your Wallet from the tweet storm place to the more movement-centric place was that we took a really active role in managing the boycott list. So while some solutions, in Silicon Valley there's kind of a mentality like if you create an app or you create a Chrome plugin, then the problem is somehow magically solved. We didn't approach it from that perspective at all. We took a very personal approach, a very 
uh, personality connected approach. And we also made sure that the list had movement on it and that the companies and media knew that we were uh, really committed to getting companies off of the list. So the women who form the core of Grab Your Wallet are actually really big fans of the companies on the list. This list was not created to punish or call out companies. It was really created in hopes that we could shop there again with a clean conscience. And I think that my work in marketing and PR helped me communicate that to the PR teams involved at the companies and helped them understand that this was actually being done from a very respectful place and a place of wanting to help them evolve and change. And that was something I learned directly from Martin Luther, the, the writings of Martin Luther King. He said, you know, you have to give the entities you're boycotting a way of evolving and changing or your boycott's dead in the water. You're just, you're just creating a list of companies to punish. So, uh, I think when an undercovered aspect of Grab Your Wallet, I would have liked to see more understanding of this is that, so I, I'm from a brand background, I'm a brand expert, I'm not an activist, I'm not an organizer. And when I started to read what women were saying about encountering the Trump brand in the retail environment, it wasn't like anything I had ever seen before. This is what I mean when I say it's not a political movement, it's a cultural movement. These reactions that people are describing are visceral, non-intellectual, very uh, primal reactions. Uh, just hissed at the TV. It was like grabbing a spider when I saw the name. I dropped it as if it was on fire. Just seeing their name gives me chest pains. This is why I felt the responsibility to do something because when people encounter the name Trump in the retail environment, women often shop to relax. It's a form of recreation, of leisure activity. When they encounter the name Trump in the retail environment, especially on something that they were thinking about putting on their body, it can actually evoke bad memories. Triggers the past. Sexual abuse when I see it now. So these are visceral, primal reactions. Um, this Part of the slide deck brings up another thing that I did that I think helped to push Grab Your Wallet from a tweet storm to a movement, which was to elevate all of the people participating in it. A lot of times, you know, and I, I come from a marketing background again, so a lot of times when these things are planned, they, they are planned in a very top-down way. A campaign theme is, is thought of. Um, everybody internally agrees that it's a genius. Assets are created, they're pushed out. Messaging is pushed out and broadcast. <laughs> And I still see this all the time with my clients, even some of the more progressive and socially minded ones. You know, they see themselves in the position of broadcaster. I see myself in the position of elevator of people participating in the movement. And I think when people started to get a sense that they could become a star of the movement, that really helped to push things along. So <laughs> this is bizarre to me, but the Grab Your Wallet hashtag has now been seen over a billion times on social media. Um, in my career as a digital marketer, I've never seen a number anything close to this. I'm generally happy when a piece of content gets 10,000 organic hits. That's considered a big hit in my book. So to see that it's past a billion in terms of reach, in terms of the number of times it's been seen is, is remarkable to me. Um, along the way, the movement has acquired layers of meaning. I think this is really interesting. It started as a response to the Access Hollywood tapes, but there are spikes in activity that happen around it that I can distinctly see. The first big one was when Ivanka returned to the campaign trail in the wake of the Trump tapes. The next big one was when Donald won and journalists started to do really amazing coverage on the scope of the conflicts of interest this family has. Uh, the third one was when the Trump administration tried to revoke uh, basic bathroom protections for trans students in schools. The largest one to date it was actually surrounding the attempted Muslim ban. And that's right around the time that Nordstrom announced it would be dropping Ivanka Trump's products from its stores. Uh, there was a lot of celebration around that, which we were really happy to see. This is Chelsea Handler. This goes back to my assertion that it's okay to think of ourselves as consumers and that there's a lot of power in thinking of ourselves as consumers. And, showing off our ability to consume to some degree. I think that this um, is a natural, joyous uh, part of the movement and I'm really happy to see it. Um, we've had some amazing media coverage along the way. I think one, one tip that I would share with you if you're somebody who regularly courts journalists, I know there are a lot of journalists in the audience, but if you're, if you're an organization that looks for media attention, one thing that I found really helpful was 
I really liked the feeling of breaking news. So I knew that you know, there's been 130 like, tier one pieces of media coverage on Grab Your Wallet in something like seven or eight months. Um, over a dozen in the New York Times alone. I, st I knew that that part of the effort was successful when I started to feel like, you know what, I don't know if I want to give this to a journalist, this piece of news. I might want to break this myself. That was when I knew that we had achieved momentum in the media and I really like that feeling and I suggest that if, if you've had a challenge around getting a media attention for whatever it is you happen to be doing, start to compete directly with the media for eyeballs because there are a limited amount of minutes in the day that people have and it can be kind of fun to start to break news on your own regardless of how much attention it gets at the time. When you show that momentum and that cadence, that can be incredibly strategic. Uh, we've had a few celebrities tweet about Grab Your Wallet along the way. Uh, Lucy Lawless was one of the early ones. She's so fantastic. I love the uh, distinctly Australian tone of her tweet, too. Let's see if I can get back to it. Hey, shop. <laughs> Carrying a Trump brand gives tacit support to a racist, sexually assaultive tax dodger. I can't shop with you. I love her so much. <laughs> Greg, Greg Luganis, Olympian, was an early supporter. John Leguizamo very outspoken, awesome person. I think this is my favorite tweet of the entire effort though, because when Nordstrom dropped Trump brand products, Joy Reid said, Nordstrom bows to grab your wallet. And I thought, yeah, I like that. I, I don't really want to be carrying around a cardboard sign 20 years from now. I, that's not fundamentally who I am. I would prefer that profound and permanent change simply happened and that companies no longer profited from campaigns of hate. <laughs> and that uh, we can flex our consumer power in the direction of inclusion and respect. This, I thought I'd include this. This isn't overtly about grab your wallet, but our president felt the need to tweet, not surprisingly, about the Nordstrom drop, attacking in the process a publicly traded American company. Um, before I wrap up, I'm at the end of my time, but I just wanted to give you a quick stat on how much consumer power we have exactly. One of the big problems is that GOP super PAC spending and federal elections outpaces Democratic spending by about 49%. But consumer power, everything flips. Things are really close at the polling place in America. They're not close at the cash register. This is just this 2.2 trillion figure is just the women who voted for uh, Hillary Clinton, who voted against Trump. That's, that's their collective economic power. So I'm excited to help people continue to flex that power and I thank you so much for having me today.